Welcome to another episode of the How Do I Do This podcast. My name is Alicia Levels Moore, and this podcast is brought to you by Polaris, and it is powered by Harvest House Media. I cannot be more excited today because I got my girl here with me, okay? Miss Aisha Taylor. All right, and she has multiple businesses. We got Bridge and Root. We have Element and Vibe. We got a lot of different things, but I want to jump into a really, really interesting conversation around how do people get started in the fashion industry? How do they pivot into brick and mortar? But then also, one thing I have always appreciated about you from the time we've known each other is that you operate in being your authentic self. And I think that that's important when you get ready to enter into entrepreneurship. And people are going to tell you how they think you should show up, how they think your business should show up. And I think that you do an awesome job at staying true to who you are. So I want to dive into your story. And one thing I always like to talk about is the premise, the motivation, the intent behind this podcast is to make sure people get tangible advice, right? right? So we have heard a lot of different stories. People talk about a lot of things. But one thing I always want to reiterate is that you can tell people as much as you need and them winning doesn't mean that you lose, right? That's right. And so I think the more that we get comfortable with information sharing, the more we can see more people come along this entrepreneurial journey. Now, let's be clear. Entrepreneurship is ghetto. At times, okay? Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is it's it's more than just like traveling and looking cute on Instagram. It takes a lot of grit, a lot of hard work, um, a lot of mental resilience. And I think that I wanna make sure people get a chance to hear those stories. So welcome to the How Do I Do This podcast. Thank you for being our guest. Thank you for having me, dear. Yes, I'm excited. Okay, so we are gonna jump right in. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself. You have 25 years of experience yeah. in fashion, retail, all these different things. So, I mean, did you always know this is like a passion of yours? Because I know when I was little, I said I wanted to be a vet until I killed, I'm sorry, until animals had accidentally died in my care as a child. Mm -hmm. Then I realized I needed to pivot, yeah. right? But like, mo <laughs> but most people, they kind of know what they've always wanted to do. Was like fashion, was that something that was always like, I know that this is my jam? So let me just kind of take it all the way back. Okay. Okay. When I was probably in about the fifth or sixth grade, um, so I am, um, my mom was a single parent, okay, and it's one of four children, right? Even when I was really young, around that age, I was really just taken aback by fashion and even what was going on then, but we couldn't really afford those things, but I remember my mom buying me this one outfit, it was like, um, this is Fast forward to about the eighth grade when MC Hammer came out. Okay? Yeah, MC Hammer had us in the chokehold. Look, look. <laughs> she bought me this yellow and black, like, MC Hammer pants. I had the shirt, the vest, and the pad leather shoes. Mm. I was just the bomb. Okay? Stunting on them. Okay. I was. Now, she never sent me looking crazy to school, but there were certain things. I've always had my own style, mm -hmm. and I've always been different, kind of, and, and, and just kind of wanted to do my own thing and never really followed the status quo. Okay, so let's fast forward a little bit more. Okay. okay? So I get a job. In fashion, my very first job at okay. the Limited. At okay. Girl, the Limited. Yes, yes. The Limited. R.I.P. Yes, girl. R.I.P. the Limited. <laughs> and I was horrible. Okay, friend. I mean, straight up. Like, I worked in retail. This was my very first retail job. I was horrible. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand why do they, like, want me to go talk to these people. I mean, they know what they want. Why am I here? But I still was happy to be in the fashion world. Okay. Fast forward. Okay. I don't know if I got fired or if I quit or if she took me off the schedule. I don't know. But I didn't work there anymore. Okay. All right. So went off to school. Okay. Here I am uh, working work study. But I was like, I don't like stuff to get the best of me. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I was like, I want to try it again. So got back into retail. Don't know if you're familiar with County Seat. No, ma'am. Okay, that's real throwback. Okay, where where do we find okay. it? Okay, county seat is no longer. Oh, I, obviously. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. But it was like a denim world. They had like different shirts and stuff like that, but okay. it was a denim world. But I took off from there. The rest is history. Hmm. I've always loved fashion, um, but again, I've always kind of wanted to do my own thing, so... Okay. Okay. So you you went throughout this journey. You got introduced to you got introduced to fashion when you your mama hooked you up. Yeah. And you was like, yeah, I'm that girl, mm -hmm. right? And so it really kind of sparked your interest in that. And so you jumped into retail. So you worked at County Seat, mm -hmm. girl. I mean, where where was it located? Just give me. <laughs> so I worked. So I went to University of Alabama. Okay. okay and I worked okay. at the one in 
um, Tuscaloosa. Okay. But there was also one in, uh, they were everywhere, okay? But I was so good at my job that they sent me to different ones to help them get their sales up. Huh. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, okay. So. so, what did you major in at UA? Business. Business. Okay. So, when you were working at County Seat, what was it kind of that you were doing that they were like, okay, was it you were really good at sales? Was it customer service? Because, I mean, that's an interesting point because you're working for somebody else mm -hmm. and you're in fashion and retail, which you're going to eventually do yourself. Mm -hmm. But there was something about you in that position where they were like, hey, we need you to help us open up multiple things. And I'm sure there's experience from that moment that helps you now. So what do you feel like it was then? So I think um, even who I am today, I was that same person then. Okay. I love people and I'm super true to mm -hmm. who I am and so I think people kind of resonate and kind of connect with that Okay, and so I think it's a twofold it was sales because I ran circles around even the manager mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know um, the other associates and so it's twofold I, great customer service okay and um, I was good at sales okay because I listen to people you have to listen okay well, t well real quick yeah. t talk to me about sales like what's the because I think too like Sometimes we will put stuff on the internet and we think like, oh, yeah, people going to buy it. Because mm -hmm. there's this, I don't personally believe in the school of thought. If you build it, they'll come. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you build it, that's cool. They might see it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They might know about it. But I think that there is this art of sales. Now, in this world, like, sometimes stuff is too salesy. It's yeah, like, I agree. G give me some space. You know what I mean? But what, what kind of would be, like, your one piece of advice or something that you learned in that time period about sales that you feel like helped you thrive? You have to listen to people. You know, you can't just say, this right here will be great for you. And you don't even know where they're going, who mm -hmm. they kind of are. At this point in the game, you know, like I said, I've been in it for a while. At this point, I can almost talk to somebody for five minutes and understand what they like and what they don't like. Hmm. You know, and people sometimes find that super, super cool because you have to pay attention. You can't just put your blinders up and just roll with what you think mm -hmm. okay and you have to be able to provide for people if that makes sense like um in any industry what are you what are you providing for these people that you want to come and, and purchase something from you mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so you have mm -hmm. to listen so it's, it's too it sounds like there's a certain level of emotional intelligence that you have to have too right yeah i think sometimes we leave with to your point like okay well this is my product this is my mm -hmm. service and you need to buy it because i said because i'm trying to get i'm trying to get I'm trying to get your coins you know what i'm saying but really taking the time to understand your audience understand what they need and you can still have a offering and a product, but how do you tailor that to them? How do you customize it to them to get them to realize that what you have is valuable? And you know what's also important? Um, oftentimes, and I, you know, have a location, have a store, whatever, but oftentimes, even in if you're working in retail or just in the industry period, you have to understand that if you do something wrong or if the customer may borderline be wrong, how can you fix this situation? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you need to do in order to fix, remedy this situation? Mm -hmm. You know, and not just, oh, well, they'll be okay. All right. No, then. because what happens is more, they're going to talk about the bad things you did more often than they talk about the good things Absolutely. you did. So how can you fix it? Absolutely. Like you, you literally like in sales, in business, like being solutions oriented mm -hmm. is, is a very, very important like characteristic It's right. figuring out to your point, like how can we solve this? Mm -hmm. Because I am a reviewer. All mm -hmm. right. I'm on. Yep. Sense. I'm on every time I get a chance. Mm -hmm. I do good and I do bad. Mm -hmm. But to your point, like for some reason, I don't know our makeup. I'm going to tell you about the bad thing more than I would tell you about. Mm -hmm. The good thing, mm -hmm. you know, and when people are going to look up your business or they're asking people about it, it just takes one. That's it. It just takes one. And and they paint your whole business, your whole product, your whole service with a brush. Baby. They do. One person. Right. And it could literally just been a misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. So like solutions oriented in, in sales. OK, so we had County Seat Girl selling all the denim across Alabama. All right. Amen. Amen again. And so <laughs> you, you transition out of that. And then, OK, you come back to Birmingham. So that was kind of early on in my college career. Okay. Um, so let's just, again, fast forward. Okay. Okay. So then I started working for higher end um, clothing boutiques or designers. Mm -hmm. um, 
Saks Fifth Avenue, BCBG Max Asphia, Ralph Lauren. And so I started traveling. I mean, this was my thing. Okay. Yes. Um, but what I want people to understand is, I mean, there is a certain, I guess, je ne sais quoi you have to have in order to, you know, position yourself in these spaces. Mm-hmm. But you also need to maintain integrity. That part. So. Okay. It's a good I word. You do. You have to maintain integrity. Now, I was fired multiple times, not because of my uh, ability to produce, Mm -hmm. not because I sucked at my job because I was excellent and won several awards. But here we are. You're coming at me with something you want me to do Mm -hmm. that just doesn't feel right to my spirit. And I'm not doing that. Mm. Okay, so now we're going to find a reason why we kind of don't want you here anymore. You Got understand you. what I'm saying? Got you. And so um, you mentioned Ed, Element and Vibe. Mm-hmm. You know, Element and Vibe is a uh, message-based t-shirt company, okay. empowerment t-shirt company. And sometimes people get a little bit, um, and I don't mean to jump the gun. I'm no, to you do. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, sometimes people get a little confused or like how did you go from you know the t-shirts empowerment you know t-shirts to a brick and mortar um higher end men's boutique and although they are two separate entities Mm -hmm. they are actually one and the same okay Okay. um so let me explain what i mean by that okay so element and vibe you almost have to be a bold spirit to wear these t-shirts okay um because there are messages that are very powerful that make people uncomfortable they they spark conversations Mm -hmm. um they make people ask um so what do you mean by that Mm -hmm. you know um but at the same time there's an authentic piece to that okay so bridge and root so the meaning of the name bridge and root i'm bridging that guy from day to night and i want him to be rooted in his authenticity and and i forgot the other mm, mm, mm. (laughs) good But yes, I want him to root it in his authenticity mm-hmm. and his girl's gonna come back. Anyway, to me. you're gonna come back to me. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so all, all in all, you're gonna be who you are. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's so important to me. Yeah. So okay. So we go. So you're working at these these different high end places. You having some challenges because again, we talk about the the being true to yourself, being mm-hmm, rooted, mm-hmm. right? And so you go from there. You like okay, I'm good. I'm gonna go ahead out of my. My passion, my spirit, my boldness, and just really connected to who I am. I'm going to start a, a t-shirt company, empowerment t-shirt mm-hmm. company, where I can say the things that need to be said and other people can kind of share in that message. So you have element and vibes. You create that. So then you go to a brick and mortar space. Yes. That's a whole different ball game. It is. Totally. It's, a, it's a beast. So, okay, what? when did you know, like... I want to go into brick and mortar. And what made you kind of make that shift? Because I'm sure producer shirts and selling them is much different and probably a little easier than maintaining a building. And most people, we want that, right? It's like, mm-hmm. hey, I want a, a space. If I think about my boutique. Now, you have a lot of people who are now doing like online. I do want to talk about that too. Okay. But going from, okay, Element and Vibe to Oh, you know what? I'm about to I'm about to open up a stuff. I'm about like what was that thought process? And then I'm gonna ask you some questions about what that was like because okay. I don't think people too many people know about what it takes to to get a space. Yeah. Um so during my processes of working in retail, um, I was also a fashion stylist. Okay. Okay. So I style for men and women. And styling for men in Birmingham can be a bit difficult because guys don't really have anywhere to go here in Birmingham. Mm-hmm. You either have to order online or possibly shop at, sa- you know, based on what you're looking for. Mm-hmm. If that guy is paying me to style him, there's a certain look he's going for. Um, so, you know, 10 years ago, I was like, I would like to open up a man's boutique, mm-hmm. you know. And so... It took that long um, before I made that move, before I dived into that. Yeah. So, yeah. What, what do you think was the biggest? What? Because so, sometimes it's just timing, mm-hmm. right? Because there's a lot of times I get plenty of ideas and I'm like, okay, I'm going to put a pin in that. Doesn't mean it needs to happen right now, but I know I need to put it on my That's right. my list, right? Mm-hmm. So, it was kind of like an idea. And you're like, hey, I'm, I'm coming for you. So the the ten years passes. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of experience, mm-hmm. a lot more up under your belt, right? Mm-hmm. And then it's time to get a space. Yeah. 
What was that like? So because I I know personally from operating a brick and mortar, there's looking for the space. That's right. There's dealing with the property owners mm-hmm. or the development companies. Then there's the leasing. There's the it's insurance. A, it's everything. There, right? There's the down payments. There, mm-hmm. I mean, there's all these different things. So what was that process like for you? So um, mm-hmm. it started with looking for a space. Mm-hmm. Well, no, it started with writing my business plan. Got you. Okay. I started writing a business plan, you know, came up with several different names. Didn't really come up with the name until almost... Um, maybe about a year before we opened. Okay. But wrote my business plan, did a lot of research on local and area stores. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I started like looking. Now keep in mind, looking over a a, a span of years, there are um, several pictures in my phone, in my husband's phone, Mm -hmm. about different spaces that we were looking for. Mm -hmm. Um, And... Yeah, but like you said, there's a there's a there's a process. Yeah. You know. So, okay. So, let's go back because this this is another thing I like to talk about too mm-hmm. is when pulling back the curtains to like all the stuff that it requires, but then two, some of the things that are required up front. So, there's like this debate sometimes around business plans. Sometimes it's like, "Oh, they're antiquated. They're not needed." But But to your point, you're like, hey, one of the first things I did was I sat down and I thought through what this was going to take. And so there are new ways to approach business plans. So you have like the lean business model canvas, Mm -hmm. which is like the shorter version. It's not the 50 page version that everybody thinks of. Mm -hmm. But what you're saying is, hey, I needed to to sit down and do that because what you were saying, I had to do a competitive analysis of all of the businesses around me. So I knew that within a certain radius, there were only so many men's stores. Mm -hmm. I knew that there were only so certain so many um types of styles for men to shop so then i could understand my competitive and unique value yeah and you need a framework i mean you need a framework for what you're going what you're trying to do and it doesn't have to just stay that it's not solidified in that but you're you're setting yourself up with this framework of what you want your business to be Mm -hmm. you know what you're aiming for it to be Mm -hmm. and what you see it to be you know so that was i mean for me that was super important Got you. So okay, it's like okay, bet. Got my business plan. I've spent. I, I know this is something I want to do. Do I've spent over a decade thinking about it. Mm-hmm. So then the question always becomes, where am I gonna get this money from? Mm-hmm. Huh? We'll, how we gonna? <laughs> When you answer that down payment, where's it coming from, cuz? Right? It's like, yeah. the, it's a whole, it's a whole thing, right? So, kind of, and there's a large conversation, and I, I've made mention of this several times, around funding and capital for black and brown entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. right? And it's a, it's going to be a continual conversation because some people are cap when they say that they're trying to fund us, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but then there are people who are really doing the work, mm-hmm. right? So what was that process? Because there's the dream and then there's the bridge. That's right. <laughs> to, 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 to get, get there. there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So what was that like? So for me, um, I cashed in my 401k. Okay. You know, I all of it. Okay. I believe in myself. And I'm not telling, you know, the next person to do that. I'm just saying that's what I did. Okay. I cashed in my 401k. Um, some people say, you know, put your house up and all mm-hmm. of that. Now. I got to have someone live. Yeah. I got some so, kids. We didn't do that. Mm-hmm. You know, we do have a home. We didn't do that. Um, my husband did take out a loan. Mm-hmm. Are the interest rates superb? No, they're not. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. They're not. Yeah. They're, you know, they're in the 20, 20-ish percent mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but we feel like this will take off. And yeah. it will be worth it. Yeah. Um, you uh, you I mean, great, great risk, you a great return, right? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, is it a risk? It's absolutely a risk. Yeah. Um, but you know, I'm betting on we betting on me. We betting on bridge and root, you know. Listen, and I love that. So let let's talk about that because I think there's a level of betting on yourself and what are you willing to do that is of course moral and legal. <laughs> That's right. To to bridge the gap between where you're trying to go. Mm-hmm. And I think that one of the things that stop people is the level of investment that it requires. And that's not an easy thing to do. It's not. It's, it's, not, it's, it's, it's scary. Absolutely. But it, uh, on the other side of fear mm-hmm. is where you find your successes. Mm-hmm. It's where you find your millionaires. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to be... You have to do things scared. Mm-hmm. Okay, you can't walk through life 
oh, I can't do that because that might not happen. You know, I mean, you you don't have to, but guess what? Somebody gonna do it, and you're gonna be. And I'm, you know, I'm not knocking people that work for other people. I'm not knocking that. But if you want this type of success, or if you want to be that type of person, you have to jump. Yeah, yeah. You know, you have to. You take it. You have to take a risk. Absolutely. I mean, for for me, kind of my personal philosophy when I'm out here making these decisions, shout out to my husband for his support, is, right. you know what I'm saying, is like, I am more scared of being the same person. Me too. And of doing the same me things. Too. And looking back on my life as I age and be a woulda, shoulda, coulda girl. Can I, can I tell you a story? Tell me a story. So when I graduated from college, mm-hmm. again, I, I'm still, did I get my degree in business? Absolutely. Now I had a concentration in healthcare. Don't know why. Mm-hmm. That wasn't really my thing, but whatever. Mm-hmm. So I came home, okay, and I started looking through all of the fashion magazines. And I started calling all of the fashion directors, mm-hmm. okay? And I got on the phone with... Um, the owner of the mod squad and God, why is her name forget? I'm losing her name, but she is, which I didn't know who she was at the time. Okay. Okay. She was like, Oh, I love your tenacity. I love what you're doing. Come up here to New York. I want you to help me style and work with me. Okay. Mm-hmm. Fear kept me from doing that. Mm-hmm. Okay. I was probably 24, 25. Now, um, God, I can't remember her name, but come to find out, Long story short, she's the one who styles Puffy, Missy, and all those people. You, can you think of her name? Mm-hmm. It's like June. Um, yeah, June. Ambrose. June yes, June thank Ambrose. You. That's mm-hmm. who I was talking to. Girl, you talking to June? I love yes. June. No. Okay. Wow. And so all these, all wow. these years later, although I didn't do that and my life wouldn't be where it is now, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have my boys mm-hmm, and all mm-hmm. this if I had done that. But see, that's a regret in my mind, mm-hmm. you know. Because it, during that time, it's kind of when I started styling and all this kind of stuff. And so I don't like living with that yeah. thought in my mind. And yeah. I just hate, I don't, and I, and I said when I decided to sign, I signed during the depths of, depth, depths of COVID. Mm. I signed my lease. And I don't, I don't like living with just, because I almost didn't do it because it was during COVID. Yeah. I said, I can't, I can't have another thought like that in my mind. Yeah, I mean, I, same. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like, I much rather try, see how it goes. And I mean, you know, <laughs> this is not it. But if it don't work, it don't work. Just, and guess what? That's right. You ain't yeah. never getting money back. Yeah. I'm just playing. You get some money back. <laughs> but it's like, it's like, listen, what I'm going to do? I'm going to keep going. You know, I'm going to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Like, people buy houses and they grow out of them. And guess what they do? They sell them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You move on. But I much rather try, try. a thing than always talk about what I could have done. What I could have done. What I could have done. And I just, I can, I mean, I feel like even thinking about that just, it, it freaks me out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so, we have to be willing to at least give our dreams place to live. Mm-hmm. I mean, give it a shot. Yeah. And, and, you know, when you talk about, okay, like, listen, I'm not I'm not saying that this is your pathway, but my pathway was I took what I had at my disposal, which, which was my 401K, and I cashed that boy out. And people are like, ooh, that's risky. I mean, technically, 401Ks are risky, too. Somebody else invested your money. Yep. You can be 50 years. You don't know how much is going to be in there. Yep. When they get finished playing with your stuff. Yep. You know what I mean? So if anybody's going to take my money mm-hmm. and it's going to play with it, 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 it must rather be me. It's mine anyway. I agree. You know what I'm saying? I agree. The, the market going to go up. The market going to go down. Mm-hmm. And by the time you get that policy, it's going to be whatever happened over two, three decades. That's right. Right? Mm-hmm. But I'm going to take what I work for and I'm going to put it into something that matters to me. And I'm willing to try. You know what I mean? And I think that that's something that's... So important. Is it scary? Absolutely. Absolutely. I remember when I was building this business, there was the week before we opened, I was we have a um a LED sign mm-hmm. in the lobby. And I went to go get the LED sign. It was like eight hundred dollars. I was like, God, no, this sign is expensive. And I <laughs> sat in the car and right before I pulled back up, now people are here at the building, they moving furniture. I was bawling. Mm-hmm. I mean hysterical, like Calling out to the Lord Almighty. Like, it's not tears. I'm giving Viola Davis. Yeah. Because I was afraid. Yes. But I had made it so far already. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, you got the building. You got the stuff. People, and it's like, I am so scared. Mm-hmm. And you're going to do that. Mm-hmm. And just because you're afraid, just because you cry, just because you don't know what in the world is going on, it doesn't mean you stop. That does not mean you stop. It's not going to mean that you don't want to stop. Because just yesterday, I was like, oh. 
I was like, you know, I think I'm gonna just oh. give up. I th- giving up seems easy. I just want to be a kid all the woman. time, all the time. Because you know what? People see what looks cute. Mm-hmm. They see the pretty. They see the glam. You know, but to be honest, that's probably about ten percent of it. Yeah, maybe maybe seven. Maybe seven. <laughs> for real. Like, like for real. To be honest, because it's like I'm I'm like sometimes like what have I gotten myself? Girl, into? I'm not even gonna lie to you. Every other day. Yeah, seriously. And it's not far in between. It's like what was really cause you you are dependent upon your cause you wear so many hats. Mm-hmm. And you have to find time for self help. Mm-hmm. or self time mm-hmm. just and and it's hard yeah it's really hard but that's so important because you can't run a business if you are depleted mm-hmm. and i'm talking to myself too yeah because you, i mean you you simply cannot continue to go on fumes like i don't sleep like i need to but i'm trying to do better yes you know but it's not it's not all glam no it's not even not at all and, no. and it's not even to be discouraging right no 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 but but it is to be honest to be about the honest. journey mm-hmm. transparent. because you, transparent because you have to prepare your mind for action and for battle you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. that when no one else believes it when no one else is in your right. space and it's just you and you like what the people at you have to still have something yes. some sort of hope mm-hmm. that anchors you yes right to continue to keep going you have to i mean literally some days i'm like alicia why did you do this this is so is so stupid but you know what i mean but then there's days where you where it's affirmation it's like oh no 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 oh. i know i know i'm on the right path right it's it's this continual ebb and flow right mm-hmm. of feeling like what in the world and then like no i'm on to something you know That's right. and you have to be willing to believe in yourself and you know be willing to pivot whenever necessary like you were saying get the help that you need that's the space i'm in learning how to figure out some things with this money and get help and you have to be self because you you people around you may hold you accountable, but you have to have a level of self accountability. Mm-hmm. OK, where you're like, hold up. I know I'm scrolling on Instagram, but I need to be doing some work. Mm-hmm. I need to be doing something mm-hmm. uh, beneficial. Yeah. You, you know what won't let me scroll on Instagram too long? My lease payment. Right? Because yeah. I know it's coming. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I know it's coming. I know that overhead is coming. Mm-hmm. I know people have to be mm-hmm. paid. And so it is too, again, not to be discouraging, but like everybody is not meant to be a business owner right. or entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. And I think too, like the society we're in makes everybody feel like that's what you have to do. And that's Listen, not, yeah. ain't nothing wrong with working a job. No. It is a blessing to have a consistent paycheck yes, to go in. You know what time is going in. You know what time yep. is going to start. That's a blessing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like, listen, but for those who are choosing to go down this path, like you have to have something that it, you're continually reminded and motivated by. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and a lot of times people say, like, and, and not, not cliche, but in a very cliche way of, like, know your why. But you truly have to know why you're doing it. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's your mission, but sometimes it's a commitment to yourself. Mm-hmm. Keep a promise to yourself. Yep. Right? Yeah. Do something for you. Mm-hmm. And I think that we get into this place where we're so busy giving out and doing all these things and showing up here. But what are you going to do for yourself when mm-hmm. you look back on this life? Will you be pleased with the decisions that you made and the things that you at least dared to do? Right. I say this. So I have a whole bunch of kids. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> I do. I have, I, I, but I have three daughters, right? And one thing that's really important to me for my daughters is, you know, when they get to a certain age, your kids, they don't really have to be in relationship, right? Mm-hmm. At a certain point in their lives, like, they're dependent on you, right? That's right. But when my daughters get to an age where they see and they're able to find other people that they admire, I want to be in that lineup. Mm-hmm. But I have to give them something to admire. Yeah. You know, and sometimes we're, we're, we appreciate our parents for keeping us alive, for being mm-hmm. great, but we ain't got nothing to really mm-hmm. hold. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, no, 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 no. I dare not mm-hmm. get to a point in my life and look my children in the face and say, you could do anything you want to do. But I didn't do it myself. Yeah. yeah. I didn't dare to do it myself. So I really can't even give you any real tangible advice. Yeah. Except for, baby, you can do it. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, how? Yeah. 
tell me where should I pull this from, right? And so in order to be able to be in a place to give my children and anybody else advice, I have to be willing to go through it myself. I got to be willing to try the hard thing myself. And then I come back and say, no, I promise you, you can do it. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, you can do it. I promise. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. And so like, just, I just appreciate your honesty and like, listen, this is what I chose to do. And this is what I had to do. Mm -hmm. If, if I'm a bet on anything, baby, it's going to be on me. Yeah. I mean, because who else going to do it? Now, do I, I'm so appreciative of my husband because he is so supportive. Um, but that's where, cause I just, you know, people before I, before I signed my lease, mm -hmm. I had people telling me, don't do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. not a good idea. Yep. Don't do it. You know, and I almost listened. Mm -hmm. Okay. But again, I know that God put this in me. Okay. So I decided to move forward. And I'm glad that I did. I'm glad you did too. And I think, you know, that also speaks to we can have people around us who love us mm -hmm. and want the absolute best for us. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes people will give you advice based out of their own fears. Yes. And you have to be very careful. You have to be very and, careful. And it's not that they don't love you. It's not that they don't want to mm -hmm. see you succeed, but they care about you. They don't mm -hmm. want to see you fail. fail, right? They don't want to see you hurt, mm -hmm. you know? But you know that there's a certain level of um, risk mm -hmm. that is attached to doing anything that's worthwhile, right? Right? Mm -hmm. Which is why there are the people who are in the history books and then there's people who read them. Mm -hmm. I agree. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and so even be the same. I remember people were like, girl, what is you doing? And not that they don't love us. No. That's not what that means. No. But see, sometimes people um, put off their fears mm -hmm. on you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and, and at that point, you have to decide, are you going to listen? Yeah. You not? And that doesn't mean that they don't have good advice sometimes. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's not what that means. And sometimes when people are talking to you, sometimes... Yeah, it might benefit you to listen. Absolutely. But not always. Yeah. Again, it goes back to, right? So this is probably going to be the title of this episode, being rooted. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because you're rooted in who you are, mm -hmm. because you're rooted in your vision for yourself, yes. you know what needs to be plucked up and you know what doesn't. Mm -hmm. So at my core, I know I need to sign this lease. Mm -hmm. But like you said, you might give me some other advice, but I might be able to, okay. Yeah. I might be able to take that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I think... At the core of who we are, when we are daring to do a thing, are you rooted? Mm -hmm. Because if you're not rooted, you're going to be rooted up. Like, you're going to be willing. Oh, yeah. You're going to be willing to quit whenever it gets hard. And that's going to be every 48 hours. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so I just, I, it's, it's just important to just, you know, when you're trying a thing and you're doing something different. And sometimes you don't have a lot of people around you that think like you. You know, they That's love it. you, mm -hmm. they're supportive, and you could call them for anything, mm -hmm. but they don't think like you. Mm -hmm. They don't have that wow, crazy, like, yes. let's do it. I don't know, let's, you know what I mean? I'm crazy. I'm just, <laughs> like a fox, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't, you don't have, and so sometimes you don't have people to bounce that craziness yeah. off yes. of, you know what I mean? Oh my because, God, that's so important. Girl, because I think like, and, and not in a negative way, because I have a very sound and clear mind, but I think right. there's a level of delusion to entrepreneurship. You, you have to be a real. little off. That's real. Yeah, you Because let me tell you something too. That delusion is a good word. Mm -hmm. Because you see things that are like nobody else can see that sound strange to people. Mm -hmm. But see, when you produce it and it comes into reality, like, I wouldn't have never thought about that. Mm -hmm. That's dope. Mm -hmm. Because it's in my brain and I'm a little mm -hmm. delusional. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is how you do. But it's real. Yeah. Because... People don't see what you see. Yeah. Okay. So I love that. And I mean, too, like, it's also a level of imagination. Yes. You know, and when we talk about that delusion, it's being able to see things, That's right. to your point, mm -hmm. in a way that others Other just can't can, see they it. They can't see it. Because it doesn't make logical sense. Mm -hmm. How would you get from point A to point B? How, how, well, how are you going to do that? Mm -hmm. Well, how do you do, how do you, that's for those people. Mm -hmm. See, it's easier for them to do it. And you're like, baby, watch Watch me. me work. And I mean, the thing that motivates me is somebody telling me I can't do mm -hmm. something. Now, I'm going to think it through, but I'll be like, okay. okay. All right. Stay tuned. Stay <laughs> Just. 
But Rhea, don't keep your finger off the dial. It's, 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 it's really important like to have people around you. And I think that's why this space that we're building via this podcast, the, space, the physical location that is Polaris, is so important to me because I need you need other people around you that's like, girl, that sounds crazy. Do it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need help? Mm-hmm. You know, like who you need, you need me to connect. There, there needs to be a community of people because when we think about culturally, it took innovators. Yeah. People who were willing to shake the table, yeah. people who were willing to do something that nobody had done. And even when we think about in this generation, I mean, we are really the most privileged. Yes. Mm-hmm. We have access to more information. We have mm-hmm. access to so many different yeah. things. When we think about our ancestors, people, I mean, not even back, back. I'm talking about 10, 20, 30, 40. Man, yeah, we are at an advantage. Imagine what it was like in that time period to do something that had never been done before. Yep. Right. So for me, on like a spiritual level, right, a culture, I feel like I have a responsibility mm-hmm. to do something. I agree. What you just you don't just, you just you don't take up space. You know what I'm saying? You ain't gonna do nothing. And there's so many people with amazing ideas. But the question is, are you rooted in something? You know, yeah. are you rooted in something? Are you rooted in your mission? Are you rooted in yourself? Are you rooted in your dream? You know, and are you willing to not let anything uproot you? That's so important. And and, and just being who you are. Okay, so rooted in your authenticity and your individuality. Mm-hmm. That was the word I was missing. There we go. Come on, want to do it? Um, but see, again, you have to be true to who you are. Mm-hmm. You have to be rooted into what you know to be real for you. So when I wrote my business plan, in my business plan, I wrote which I wrote 10 years ago, looking at several different spaces, I said I want to expose brick, industrial mm-hmm. piping, mm-hmm. and cool tunes throughout the store. That's exactly what I have. Mm-hmm. So I think when people say... I, I want to manifest this. Girl, you know what I was about to say, because you know the girls now, they're like, manifestation. Look, I ain't mad I at mean, it. That's, 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 you know. it's, it's real. Yes. I wrote it down. I made yes. it plain. However, you can't just sit there mm-hmm. and think it's just going to be, oh, I, I manifested this. Mm-hmm. What work did you put in? Let's be real. Okay. What did you do? Okay. What did you do to get there? You know, because there's a process, yes. right? It's not easy. You know, again, it's not to discourage anybody, but you have to put in the work. Yeah. You have to put in work. So, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a level of mental and sweat equity. Mm Mm-hmm. Right? And sometimes it's it's physical. I I say personally from my experience that, like, the biggest part of this entrepreneurial journey and figuring out, okay, how do I do this thing? It's really mental. Mm Mm-hmm. It's mental. It's the the mental blocks, right? Yep. It's getting past like your own issues, your own insecurities, your own ego to actualize the thing that you see in your mind. Yep. You know what I mean? And so, yes, vision boards are are good to see things. Being able to use your words and manifesting, as the girls say, now it's it's good. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But there is a there's another level to it yes. and I think the more you prepare yourself for it not to say it's easier mm-hmm. but you kind of can equip yourself with the right tools mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying yeah, so so you signed a lease in in the panini I right did. in the in, in the <laughs> in the depth of the pandemic you saw you signed a lease when brick and mortars were closed oh people it was like shut down people not even shopping so no. they not they not outside no so let me tell you how how this went so I was about to sign, but then I just paused for a second. Mm-hmm. Tears, because mm-hmm. what am I about to do? People mm-hmm. are not shopping. People are online. People are not thinking about clothes. They're thinking about zombie apocalypse. <laughs> and people are not thinking about putting on clothes. They ain't got nowhere to go. They don't, they, they're <laughs> not even outside. Remember? I'm back outside. We we're, we we inside. We inside. So right. I'm like, Lord, I need you. To, I, I need you. Yeah. So I got my Bible. Mm-hmm. I'm just telling you how this went. Listen, okay. I was at home by myself. Mm-hmm. I didn't have a verse I wanted to read. Mm-hmm. I just said, Lord, talk to me. I got my blanket. I got on the floor. Mm-hmm. I opened up my Bible, and He gave me a verse that told me, "You need to do this." A harvest, I can't remember it verbatim, mm-hmm. but a harvest, a, a seed that is not harvested, does it grow? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Something similar to that. Mm-hmm. But I was like, okay, Lord, yeah, I hear you. 
So I signed my lease the very next day. Mm -hmm. And here I am. Mm -hmm. God is good. So how has it how has it been? What what's that what has that experience been like? I mean it's been it's been great. I mean it's been ups and downs. Yeah. Oh, it's not they're like knocking the door down all the time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I'm like, Lord, where are the people? Mm-hmm. You know, but then, you know, I get people that are coming in ready to buy up everything. Yeah. And then, you know, there are some weeks mm-hmm. where it's like nobody. Yeah. And so then you have to be creative Mm -hmm. and you have to try to be innovative and figure out how can I get the people in here? Yeah. You know, so it's been, you know, it's been a ride. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, okay. So let's talk about, we got through how we got there, Mm -hmm. but there's this, this other part of having a brick and mortar and being in the fashion space where you have to find like the clothes. Mm -hmm. Right. So talk us through that process. If someone's thinking about, okay, I want to open up a boutique. I want to open a brick and mortar. And I mean, I guess the same would apply. Now this, this is not my space. So would the same apply if you're kind of getting a supplier for a brick and mortar as you would for online. So say for instance, someone's like, okay, I want to start my own, like boutique, I want to open up a brick and mortar store, right? Where do you begin the process of being able to source those clothes? Because you you have to, you know, once you, I'm sure in that business plan, you identify the style, the things, and mm-hmm. then you're a stylist. You're mm-hmm. in, so you kind of had an eye already mm-hmm. for what would be in the space. But girl, where are you finding people to get these clothes from? So, okay, here's the thing. You have to be very intentional mm-hmm. about what you say when you reach out, when you send these emails to these people, because okay. they don't know you. A lot of these people, especially like the mid to higher end, mm-hmm. they're not just going to say, okay, here's my stuff. You can have it. They have to say, okay, who are you? They're like, who are you? Who else are you carrying? Where's your location? We need pictures of your store. And we're talking mm-hmm. about online as well. So I'll mm-hmm. get to that in a second. They want pictures of your store. They want to know who are, you know, like I said, other brands that you're carrying because they want to make sure that you're partnering them with people that mm-hmm. make sense. That is representative of their brand, exactly. too. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's super important. Um, so I'm going to tell you what I did. Okay. 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 Um, when I would send my emails, hi, you know, my name is Aisha Taylor. I'm, you know, about to open up a brick and mortar. We currently carry. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, these are people that I had reached out to, but they hadn't all said, you know. I'm, it's I'm, like, but we going to carry. I mean, they by not. Faith, I'm just by saying. Exactly. My business. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, by faith. This, yeah, yeah. I left that, 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 those words out. Yeah. But they're, um, <laughs> you know, da, 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 da. Okay, great. Let's get pictures of your store. So, before mm-hmm. I had my actual store built, I had the drawings yep. or the renderings. Yep, that's important. Okay. That's a part of the imagination and vision. Here are the renderings. We're not open yet, but here you go. Yep. So this is how I started. Now, you typically want to go to market. Okay. Um, to different locations in the country. Okay. During COVID, there was no market. Mm. Okay. So I went from the very beginning, starting with numbers to all the way to Z. Mm. Okay. And looking through to see who I wanted to possibly carry, Mm. okay? And you want to look up the different markets that might be in the country, and you can't physically go. I mean, now they're back open. Yeah, for sure. But then, during COVID, that's what I did. And so I got some really good brands that are in, like, Nordstrom, Mm -hmm. and, you know, so I was able to do that, and it it helped with, you know, me having some background in fashion too so yeah okay so if they're trying to source for their store or for their online store they need to pretty much have a template email providing Mm -hmm. what they're doing who they're carrying Mm -hmm. what's their mission all the different things to make sure that these brands are comfortable that's right so do you have to okay so say for instance i'm i'm about to say Nordstrom. that don't make sense give me a brand like Like, um bonobos oh okay the B word. Yeah. Say say we them, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, perfect. I should like I I agree. So I'm gonna provide how does it work? Do I provide you twenty of, of quantity of these and then you pay for it, then there's a rev share? Like how does that work? So you select what you want mm-hmm. and until they build a relationship with you, you pay for it up, up front. front. Got you. Okay, you pay for it up front and then maybe after about a year. Then they say, okay, we can put you on net terms. Okay. Okay. And then you'll just pay for it in 30 days. Got you. Got you. Okay. That's 
That's interesting. Okay, so so that's another thing to consider if you're going to go on a brick and mortar is you need to have some capital for inventory. For inventory. Okay, mm-hmm. so you gotta you gotta sign your lease. You gotta put this deposit down. Depending on the space, you gotta build the space out. You have to build the space out. You gotta have insurance. Now, sometimes, ideally, you want to look for somewhere that has TI tenant improvement allowance. Mm-hmm. TI tenant improvement allowance. That way, you don't have to come out of your pocket to fix some to things. fix the space mm-hmm. the way you want to fix it. Okay, so that's ideal. Okay, and then and then there's the the capital to be able to get some things up front until you begin to build, build relationships, relationships. Mm-hmm. with people. You have to do that. Okay, for sure. That's that's good. That's good to know. Mm-hmm. That's good to know. And because I, I think you know, again, when people are getting ready to go into it, the more you know, the less you kind of have less of those. Yeah. Fears. You know That's, what to prepare mm-hmm. for. Most of the time when we get ready to jump into something, we don't know nothing. <laughs> right? So that's the thing that makes it even more nerve wracking. It's like I have no clue where to start. So thank you for sharing because mm-hmm. the more people know where to start, then it's like, okay. Right. Um, yeah. And you have to, and people don't understand how important merchandising is. When you're not mm-hmm. in the fashion mm-hmm. world, you go into a store, you just see what you see. But see, it's a, it's, it's a psychological thing that people don't realize that, oh, I'm looking at this because these two colors actually pop. I mean, they don't pop as much as this one, so I'm going to tune in to this one here. And mm-hmm. this is your, like, special piece you want to showcase. Got you. So merchandising also, if you're not familiar with that, then you need to familiarize yourself with kind of how you merchandise your store and Got you. filling all the spaces. You can't look, have it looking extremely empty. And if mm-hmm. you're doing boutique, you don't want to pack it out. Yeah. So it doesn't look, you know, bargain basement type, mm-hmm. you know, so... So, okay, so when you say merchandising, okay, again, I'm green, okay? It's okay. So, this is not, we're not talking about, like, the, the storefront, like, Mm-mm. some of the items that are in the storefront. We're talking about how the store itself is organized and displayed. That's correct. Got you. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Like, because you go in certain stores, and it's like, sometimes it's color-coordinated, but you just find, somehow you find your way around. And that's in part on purpose. The whole thing. Yeah. The way it's set up, the way you have, wait, where are you going to place your table? Mm-hmm. Where are you going to place your hat rack? Mm-hmm. You know, you can't have it in a place where they're naturally going to, like, walk past it. Put it mm-hmm. somewhere where they'll get to it. You understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, if yeah. this is your door, and you, let's just say, I don't know, shoes or something. If you have it here, mm-hmm. you're naturally going to walk this way. You'll miss it. So it's just certain things that are important, how you place your that's interesting. It's psychology to, to everything. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Even down to, like, I, I know, like, with, with my background in music, there are some stores, they have particular playlists that have certain, like, BPMs, beats per minute, mm-hmm. because it, it energizes you to continue to just walk through the aisles and spin, and you just like, I don't know sound. Okay. In the bed. Okay. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it's a psychology. There's even, um, there was a company I was looking at one time where they create custom scents mm-hmm. for retail. Mm-hmm. So, like, and and it does all different types yep. of stuff to, to people and their mm-hmm. buying experience. It's like it's really interesting. So even that, like when people are thinking about their store, how can you get creative with it? How can you be innovative? How can you do something different and new? Like it's one thing to, to put some stuff in a space, but it's another thing to your point to understand merchandising, to understand the psychology of people, to understand sales, right? Mm-hmm. Um, understanding relationship building. Because I think that's important too. Like, would you say that? Building relationships is, like, super key with your clients in regard to, like, them coming back, yeah. them sending other people, especially with men. Okay, Bong, tell me about this. Men are much different than women. Mm-hmm. We're we going to spend money. Mm-hmm. It don't, on anything. Yeah. I mean, don't, I don't even have to want it. That's true. I'm just going to spend money. You go to the store, it's like, what you going to do for? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I, girl, I be at Target. I be like, now, what was I here for? Mm-hmm. But I'm going to find something. Right. Men, I feel like they're a little different. So what is it like selling to men? Like, what do you feel like you had to do differently or understand differently? So men, for most of, most of, most guys, it has to make sense for them. Mm-hmm. Okay. They don't just, let me get this, let me get that. No. 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 It has to make sense for them. It has to be a sensible purchase almost. Every now and then you have guys that'll just, all right, I'm, I want this, I want that, but that's very rare. Yes. Okay. Again, for most guys, they have to. It has to make sense. Like mm-hmm. I said, they have to 
okay, now why am I buying this now? Mm. So let me explain to you why. You can not only wear it to this event that you're going to, yep. but you can also wear this when you're going to lunch. Yep. You can wear it when you're going to dinner, when you're going to church. Oh, okay. <laughs> I want to get that. Yeah. You know, it just has to make sense. And so that's the difference. Women, they just want to look pretty. That's it. It doesn't, you know. No matter the occasion. I don't know what I'm going to wear this. It doesn't, I'm getting this. i wear it one day. But for men, it has to make sense that for them to add it into their wardrobe, you know, they have to be able to understand why they're buying it. Yeah. That's good. Like, and, and that goes to understanding your audience, mm -hmm. right? Being intentional about their needs. And then, too, like, even in the process of starting, not getting frustrated. Because people are not doing what you want them to do, but it's because you don't know That's what your what customer needs. You don't know. You don't know what they need. And you have to be willing to, to listen and iterate as you go along. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? An another point, and I'm just thinking about different things. I go from size small to 2X. Mm -hmm. I have people coming in there, not coming in, I'm sorry, messaging on Facebook, <laughs> okay? What about the big dudes? Okay, well, I got 2X, but guess y'all ain't coming. Mm -hmm. So guess what? I'm, I'm, I'm sitting on all these 2X sizes, mm -hmm. and you're not coming, so guess what I did? What you do, girl? I don't really care about the 2X no more. Because mm -hmm. y'all talking, but y'all not coming. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, I have it here, but y'all not coming because mm -hmm. you're assuming. Now, I'm still reaching out. I did a, like even a whole thing with mm -hmm. a videographer and everything about mm -hmm. a bigger dude. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You know, to show y'all I, I have the stuff for y'all. So you just have to pivot. Yeah. I'm not saying that I'm not going to carry them because I did just order some more 2X. But mm -hmm. I'm just like I have to kind of see. You have to you have to see what's happening for your store. You can't yeah. just continue to do the same thing over and over again. You have to pay attention. I mean, absolutely, because there's something called overhead. Yeah, right. And that's right. real. <laughs> right. Well, which is what it costs to operate a space. Mm -hmm. Right. It's those expenses minus what your your profit is. Not have to figure out like, okay, how much is it costing me to run this mm -hmm. business? And so. Having to make those necessary adjustments and pivots and all those different things. So I just thank you for your willingness to to share and to be honest and transparent. Um, this will not be the last conversation we have. Okay. Um, and so, again, so really quickly, I like to kind of do like a little lightning round sometimes. Most of the time, it's never the same questions. Okay. Sometimes they are. But, but two things. So okay. one, I want you to kind of tell us like, a book, a podcast, a quote, something that like just changed your life, the trajectory of what you were doing. You were like, ooh, okay, I got that. Like, or something that you think people should read right now. That's good. Or listen to right now. Okay. She looks stumped, people. I am stumped. And, and, and I'm, I'm about to give you my part B, but I guess I need to give your brain a minute to take a bath. So, um, so. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, so that that's A. And then okay. the B is kind of what would be like your biggest piece of um advice, um, or word of encouragement to someone who is just daring to do a thing. I know that probably would be easier, but I want you to start with the harder one. Oh, why did you do that? I was because just gonna say I wanna start with B first so I can think about A. Well, since you're my special guest, you can okay. do what you want. I'll start with B. Okay. Okay. Um, my thing is I would like for people to, uh, my advice would be to um, stay true to who you are. This world is so filled with people that are cookie cutter versions of everybody else that what makes you you, that's like your magic power. That's like your magic sauce. Mm -hmm. That's what makes you stand out, not blending. Mm -hmm. So being true to who you are is I think so important. Um, we are filled with people, filled around, we're just people around us, so many places, so many places you go to, it's just so many people trying to be like the next person. Mm -hmm. And if you are different, it's like, oh, what's wrong with them? Nothing. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just being true to who you are, um, I think is my advice. Okay. All so, right. Stay an OG. Stay, yeah. All right, now. Um, now what was the question? Oh, see, you see how you said, hey, I want to go to B so I can think about A, but you actually was hoping you answered B so you could forget about A. <laughs> but I remember. Okay. So, a book, a podcast, a quote, something that you feel like was super helpful. And the reason I say that okay. is because there were certain things that I 
I would listen to and people would reference other things. Mm-hmm. And the the curiosity in me would go find it. We'd go listen to the audible. We'd go find the person, start to research. And so I remember when someone first told me about um, a lady named Bozema St. John, okay. um, who was just phenomenal in my eyes. Somebody was randomly talking about her at church one day. And I was like, who is that? And I mean, I was instantly changed, right? I was researching. I was looking up. And so I think sometimes when you share people things that you know, people you know, books you've read that were transformative for you. It gives them a, a path. Um, I'm still stumped. I'm so sorry. I'm done. I'm sorry. Okay, we're done I'm here. Sorry. I'm just playing, girl. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm like literally blank right now. I am. I'm you are so honest. good. No, you are so good. You are so good. Either way, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for Thanks sharing. For me. Thank you for being yourself. Um, if you guys are ever in the Birmingham area, check out Bridge and Root. If you are you do you guys have an online store? Yes. If you if you if you got a man or someone in your life and he needs some help, huh? Sit him in the it's Bridge and Root. Bridge and Root. Online. Online, bridgeandroot.com. Yep, bridgeandroot.com. Yes. Is it the little ampersand? Is it, bri- or is it bri- No, A N D. Okay, I probably can't do that online. Bridgeandroot.com. Make sure you check the store out. If you have a man in your life, your, your daddy, your uncle, your, your, your brother, your cousin, somebody, go on there. The amazing quality pieces. I have got, my husband has went in there and no shade, no tea. He's wearing pants all the time because they quality. I'll be like, sir. <laughs> Okay, he washes them. Okay. Amen and amen again. But uh, That's yeah, good. but because it's quality pieces. Yeah. So if you are online, you need something for someone. Do that. If you're in person in Birmingham, make sure you go ahead and visit. What's what's the address there? Twenty two twelve Morris Avenue, Suite two hundred, Birmingham, Alabama three five two zero three. Okay, girl, come on, zip code. Go down there. <laughs> she will be there. Someone for her team will be there to make sure we get you right. Yep. Thank you so much for coming. Thank, Thank you, you for Thank sharing you. your time. And I believe that something, something, something was said today for you to take and to remind you that you can do this. But most importantly, what we're doing is showing you how to do it so today the key is be rooted in yourself stay true to yourself and keep going all right all right until next time thank y'all